This video is part of a video guidance series of how to learn rigging, animation, and export optimization with Blender. This is my story, what I did to get all the necessary information, and I want to share this with you. This video series is not exactly a tutorial, it can be seen as a guidance for learning and explanation. But today I want to talk about FPX export and file size optimization. For sure the export settings are important, but there are some more steps for preparation, which can improve your final exported file size. I'm talking about a 3D character, a rig, a texture and some animation. I will not discuss any other kind of exports like environments or props. The main question is, what influenced the final exported FBX file size so that it has about 3.5 MB in total? Basically everything you want to export influenced the FBX. The mesh, the texture, number of bones for your rig, number of animations, length of animation and for sure the FBX settings. I've worked only with humanoid characters so far with a maximum of 5.5 to 7k triangles. This worked well for me. It is possible to integrate the texture to your FBX export. I will show you later how to do this in Blender. Depending on your texture canvas size I always try to stay under 0.5 MB for the diffuse map. For example I use this file here. Go to File, Export As and this is the new Photoshop export window. We have a canvas size of 2K and you see the predicted file size here when we save it as a PNG. Change this to JPEG and then you still have the possibility to reduce quality. I think this is the fastest way to reduce your texture file size. I'm talking about the game rig. File size will be influenced if you work with more or less bones. If you want to implement a face rig too, then you have to be careful because Rigify add many bones for the face. I haven't tried how many actions would be possible yet, but I've worked with about 5 to 10 actions so far. My actions have a duration of 0 to 300 frames so far. I haven't tried to work with more than this. There's definitely a lot what you can do here to influence the file size. But it is important to understand that every step is having an impact. I want to give you some recommendations which worked best for me. When you work with a Rigify rig and you want to export an FBX, then I advise you to create a game rig. Check out CG Dive's videos how to do this. Basically a game rig is a reduced collection of bones which emulate the animation of the control rig. The game rig is a cleaned up version which needs less file size. As well I would recommend to polish and clean up your actions and keyframes. Check again your keyframe curves in Graviditor. I'm not 100% sure if this makes any sense, but I really like to key every single controller or bone at the beginning and the end frame of an action. It is important to key the rig properties as well. For example I key F key control or the influence constraint value for the object slots. My exporting pipeline have three main checkpoints. 1. Make actions from control rig to game rig. 2. Arrangement and settings in NLA editor. 3. FBX export settings. 1. All created actions are made with the control rig, so it is necessary to bring the key movement of the control rig to the game rig. In the first step you need to bake the actions from the control rig to the game rig. The 3D geometry is parented to the game rig. The game rig doesn't have any controls, but each bone has a copy transform constraint and adopt the movement of the control rig. Follow this guide. Select the control rig. Choose any action which should be baked. Check how many frames this action need. Enter this value to the start and end frame range 
or just keep the number in your mind. Then unhide and select the game rig. Enter pose mode and select all bones. Go to pose, animation, bake action. This window will be opened and you can define start and end frame again here. It is already correct when you entered it before in the timeline. Keep frame step to 1. Check everything here except clear constraints and hit OK. A new action will be created for the game rig. Just give it a proper name, usually I give it the same name and add the word baked at the end. This tip now is not a must but a could. Check again the single channels of the action. Do you really need all channels? For example I don't need any scale information. So I just search for old scale keys and delete them. This will influence the file size slightly but doesn't have a huge impact. Just nice to know I guess. When you're happy with the action then press the push down button. This will bring the action to the NLA editor. Do this for all actions which should be exported. Start again by unhiding the control rig and selecting the next action. The second step is very easy and quick. You have several NLA tracks here and each animation has an NLA stripe. Just grab each and pull it to one track. Keep a distance between each animation stripe. I will tell you why in a second. Now press the N key to call up the side panel. It is necessary to change the extrapolation from hold to nothing. But what does this do? I will just skip the FBX exporting settings and show you the result and comparison for this issue here. When you don't rearrange the NLA stripes and keep them as they are, then they will get a file size about this. The animation will be exported, but there may be strange behavior of some animation. There is no warranty that everything will be correct. When you rearrange the NLA stripes without any gap, and without changing the extrapolation, then the animations will be exported too. But always the first frame has the T-pose in Unity and this is pretty frustrating. But if you pull every NLA strip to one track, keep distance between each and change the extrapolation to nothing, then you will get this file size. Each animation is exported correctly. So I hope that you see the difference now for this small but important preparation. Now we finally prepared everything for exporting an FBX. Select all 3D objects which should be exported and control select the game rig. File, export, FBX. This window will be opened and on the right side you find all exporting settings which will definitely influence the file size. When you want to export all textures too with this FBX, then you have to change path mode to copy and enable the little box icon here. In the include section it is important to check selected objects. Select and shift select mesh and armature here too. Ok, include section is finished. If you have to change anything in the transform section then you can do this but I don't have any need to change anything here. As well the geometry section. Apply modifiers should be enabled here. But that's all. I usually just enable only deform bones in the armature section and disable add leaf bones. And now the bake animation section. Key all bones and NLA stripes need to be enabled. All actions disabled. I don't see any advantage to enable force start and keying. Enabling this will definitely change your file size, but I think this is the same action than I did before polishing the actions. I was experimenting with sampling rate and simplify as well. This will influence your file size, but this will influence the movement of your animation too. So keep off changing those values, they have to be one. This is my exporting pipeline. Just hit export FBX and generate your FBX. I hope this video helped you for your project. Thank you very much for watching. It would be very nice to give this video a like and or subscribe to our YouTube channel for more game dev videos. Cheers!